people always ask how I balance my family life with 400 shows a year. I'm just doing what I love with the people I love. It's my magic life. I like Wes Isley. I like everything about him. All right. On today's episode, we have a mom, a TikTok sensation, a bubble artist, and a magician. Everybody, it's Meadow Perry. What's up, girl? How are you? Hey, I'm good. I, thanks for having me do this. Thanks for asking me to do it. This is great. Hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm, you just got off the road. You were in, like, Louisiana yeah. this weekend? Yeah, I was in New Orleans, um, which I'm pronouncing it correctly now. I used to pronounce it New Orleans, but it's New Orleans. <laughs> I was taught by the locals. Um, but yeah, I had a great time. Um, I, Mardi Gras festivities start really early. Um, so I got to get a little taste of Mardi Gras celebration. It was fun. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. We have a friend down there, uh, the world's smallest magician, Irwin. And he's telling me all kinds of the local traditions and the yeah. local. Yeah, there's so much history and so much. So much. Magic. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 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 Just the culture. There's a is lot. Magic. There's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. I got to um, uh, perform while I was down there. Um, I got to be part of a, I was the variety act in a burlesque show. So that was fun. I did a little magic, a little bubbles. Um, nice. But it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. They didn't ask you to dance or anything. You were just the variety. No, no, I was just the <laughs> variety. I was kind of the like, um, like the hello dolly. Like I, you know, I wore my sequin evening gown and um, walked in. I was, you know, one of the most stressed <laughs> women on the stage but oh my gosh they like these girls they're so beautiful uh, like I don't think I could ever live in New Orleans or LA or because <laughs> like people are so gorgeous in these places <laughs> crazy <laughs> See, I don't know anything about burlesque do you know anything about burlesque no not really we had Eric Tate on here and we have other mutual friends that are in that burlesque world and it's like yeah it's, it's other world I mean it really it is. is yeah it's really a whole nother world um you know being so body positive um I love it's a whole different world from Philadelphia um they're so body positive there um I love it it's 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 awesome it's a lot of fun that's are you going to do more I would love to do more um I love just I I personally wouldn't do burlesque just because I'm not comfortable and confident like that but um, I do love being a part of it and right. um, the kind of um, I like burlesque because it's not overly raunchy but it's a, it has a little bit of that I, I like I've done drag shows I've been a part of I have a lot of drag queen friends um, and they have that really raunchy style um, you know you're allowed to do blue material you're allowed to like flirt with the crowd a lot like they encourage it um, and I love that so much um, so I do definitely, I definitely want to be a part of burlesque a little bit more because I, I like, I like how they run their shows. It's a lot Just of fun. the headliner variety act, not a problem with yeah. that. You don't, you don't have to do it, but, uh, yeah. drag, that's a whole nother world that I know yeah. nothing about. No. Yeah. Never, <laughs> never, never seen one, never been a part of one. Yeah. Oh my just, gosh. <laughs> so They're so fun. They're so yeah. fun. So, um, how'd you get started in magic? Do you, oh do you gosh. Um, more of a magician? or a, a yeah bubble. I I would say I'm more of a magician um which it's it's a funny thing because um when I started bubble artistry it was really magic that I started in um I was doing um children's parties uh so let me backtrack I went to school for musical theater um and then I I took a break I started a family um and I thought like my performing days were over like literally I really thought that um and I started doing community theater. And then I was like, wow, I, I really missed this. So I started doing children's parties as a princess impersonator. Um, everybody's here, ice queen. And I was freezing bubbles. It was just a cute little throwaway trick that I was doing for kids. I would blow bubbles and I would pluck them out of the air and their little marbles, I would give them to them. Um, and that was my first magic trick, but I didn't consider it magic then. Um, and then I, I translated that to another character that was my own original character that was a fairy for the Renaissance Fair. And I started doing giant bubbles too. And it was such a hit. I was like, wow, there's something to this. People really uh, respond to the bubbles and the magic. So um, I decided to create an entire show around it. Um, 
And initially I was doing, it's so funny when I think about the magic tricks that I was doing when I first started my show, I was doing like feather flowers and um, silly Billy's uh, princess and a pickle routine. Um, so like all these things that I would never in a million years do now that were like, you know, my kind of starter magic show, um, which they're great routines. They just didn't really fit me. They were just what uh, worked in my show at the time. Um, and so, yeah, I, I just kept diving deeper and deeper, finding more bubble things. Um, I discovered this whole entire world of bubble artistry. Um, and I had some tax refund money that I wanted to invest in my performing arts career. Um, and I, I looked around and I, I said, well, what, what, is, what is the popular thing right now? And mermaids have been really popular in the last like five years. So I was going to buy a silicone mermaid tail, but I was like, wow, it seems like everybody's doing that right now. So what about this bubble stuff? Let me find this prop maker and use my money to buy these bubble props. And I did. And I sat on these bubble props for like six months, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I bought this. What am I going to do with it? Um, and I just stuck to my guns and I learned bubble wall and I learned all these bubble tricks. And um, then the pan I debuted my show in March, no, February, 2020, right before uh -huh. the pandemic. So, uh, you know, then it was a good like six months of like, oh my God, what are we going to do? Oh my God. And I, so I dived in, I built this bubble studio, <laughs> got a really nice camera, started doing a virtual show. And now um, it, it just, opened up a lot of doors and a lot of networking for me um, that people wouldn't have normally gotten to see my show, got to see it during the pandemic. And I, I think that really opened some doors for me. So here we are now, like <laughs> it's been a wild journey. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So you got started right when everything crashed. That's... Yeah. <laughs> and, and I be... honestly, I don't think that things would have picked up as well for me had we not had a pandemic and uh, had virtual shows. Like I really don't. I think it would have picked up as well. You're one of the few people that just thrived. Yeah. Pandemic. Yeah. That's good yeah. though. That's good. I know Vegas headliners are somewhere on the strip. They worked the strip and they got real jobs. They were waiters. They were yeah. instruction yeah. and made it through just starting out. Yeah. That, mm -hmm. Good job, yeah. girl. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, yeah, because I was a I was a daycare teacher right before the pandemic. And I had I had this plan that the fall of 2020, I was going to try to be a full-time entertainer. I was saving up money. I was squirreling money away. And then the pandemic hit and I was kind of forced to be a full-time entertainer. Like, so yeah. <laughs> wow. You were talking about like uh, props that you'll never use. I also yeah. collect. And I was looking at the video last week. Uh, what is this called? Stratosphere. Mm -hmm. I have four of them, but I'll never use it in a show. Yeah. It's one of these things. I, I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I have. I I have a few props that I've just collected over the years that people are like, oh, you do magic here, have this. And I, I'm like, I will never use this, but it looks cool on my shelf. <laughs> but totally. with your kids and I saw a TikTok or a Instagram video of yours and you said uh -huh. your, your son, one of your sons might be into magic later on. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like Both the, of them. Ideas because they might want to do that trick later on They're They might have yeah. a need. Their character might be totally different. I have feathers, I have silk magic that I'll never use, flower magic. Yeah. But you know what? I have an 11-year-old daughter. If she wants to do a little act in the show, that fits her. It doesn't fit yeah. me, but I still right. save it and correct it, yeah. That's so true. It's funny, I have a, um, I don't even know what it's called. It's a box that you make things disappear into. Um, okay. I don't know what they're, they're called, but a friend, a magician friend of mine gave it to me. Actually, Alex Hilshey uh, gave okay. it to me. And um, my boys were so enchanted by this box because you, you put things in it and they disappear. Well, they believed in the magic a little too much. Um, and they tried to make a banana disappear. Unbeknownst to me until like a week later, I'm like, why, is, why are there gnats everywhere? And what is that smell? They had uh, left a banana in this, this box. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and oh, it was yeah. disintegrating. It was so gross. But I had to clean it out and Clorox it. Ugh. So gross, uh, but it, it's a really funny thing when um, you have kids that, uh, you know, you're a magician and they still believe that the, I mean, the magic is real, but, you know, they still really believe that the magic is real, that there's not like mechanics that are helping it. 
along. So uh, <laughs> I think that's really funny. They they believe their mom really is magical. So you don't think that's... they're going to do magic, or you think they will do magic? Um, I think they will. Um, my older son is definitely the class clown. Um, and he's either going to be a comedian or a magician, I, or maybe both. I don't know. But um, and then my younger son, he definitely has the kind of um, like he loves they have Copperfield stuff that the big illusions. He loves that kind of stuff. Um, so maybe maybe we'll have a family uh, illusion show. Who knows? <laughs> that would be fun. That would be yeah. awesome. It is fun. It is yeah. awesome. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm saying yeah. we do it. So it yeah. is fun. Yeah. I mean, we're in the RV yeah. and we travel around with family. And, you know, every day is an adventure, man, because yeah. the show is only 45 minutes. So the show's only an hour and a half. You get to set up mm -hmm. in the takedown. Okay, it's only five yeah. hours. But you got the rest of the day. You can stop yeah. along the way. Every day we experience it together. It's so mm -hmm. awesome. That's we love cool. it. That's cool. So um, your fairy character, do you still do that mm -hmm. at Renaissance festivals? I don't. Um, I, I hung up the wings uh, for a really good reason. Uh, <laughs> I, I discovered that when you're a fairy, uh, you can't ever turn it off. Um, when you're at a Renaissance fair, especially, um, it, you, you just have to entertain kids all the time because they see you, they see a fairy and they're so they're drawn to you. So um, and it also kind of pigeonholed me into just being a kid show. And um, you've seen some of my work. It's not just for kids. Like adults are wowed by it too. So I wanted to encourage more adults to come to my show. So now my Renaissance character is more of a sorceress of soap bubbles. Um, and I have like this beautiful leather bodice with all this like Celtic knotwork design um, that I had a, a friend of mine, uh, I commissioned them to make. And um, it it's a fun show. Um, and I encourage everyone to come, um, not just for kids. And um, now it's kind of like uh if they try to put me in the children's section I tell them oh no no this is this is a grown-up show this is for everybody um so because it's just inherent that people when they see either fairies or they see bubbles they think kids um mm -hmm. and I I have really experienced that a lot of time adults are even more wowed by the bubble artistry and the bubble magic than the kids are so <laughs> Magic in general gets pigeonholed into the kids section. Yeah, I mean, it, it's true. You gotta, you gotta constantly let them know. Yeah. 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 And all true. these folks have a great time, but they come up later and say, My kids loved you. And I go, Well, yeah. I love you too. And they say, Oh, of course I did. Of course I did. I'm okay yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like come they on. don't want to admit that they enjoyed it. <laughs> right. Oh, why not? Yeah. So, yeah. Totally. So. All right. Yeah. So, uh, so you do the sorceress character. Do you do that character outside of a Renaissance festival? I've never I, worked a Renaissance festival. Yeah. Is that like is that like a 14 week contract or is it just they book you sporadically? How does that work? Um, I do the smaller fairs, so usually two or three weekends. Um, but it's you know, three or four shows a day and you you have to hawk for your show. You have to you have to go in the lanes and let people know, hey, I have a show, come to my show. Um so uh and and trying to get kind of it's kind of street style um a little bit it's a little bit like busking you're getting paid of course but um you're also putting a hat out so it's a it is a little bit like busking because you have to try and get your audience to you um but um yeah it's usually a two or three week in contract um but that character that i have is very specific to renaissance fairs um i also you know sometimes a client will ask for like a storybook character um or it's a, at a fairy festival and i'll bring out my sorceress character for that um but my stage show is more of a leading lady of broadway sequin gown very elegant sophisticated um type of character so that's been kind of the way that it's been leading um and i've been really enjoying um having this sort of give and take with the audience and i talk about kind of my journey into magic and bubble artistry um you know i have these big dreams of broadway and so it kind of lends itself because not only do you get to see cool magic and cool bubble tricks but you get to learn a lot about me as a person and i think that personal connection is really important yeah. well i gotta tell you and it, it's gonna sound bad maybe i don't know but i wasn't into seeing bubbles at a magic convention well i don't want to uh, see bubbles uh, and then you came <laughs> out of that and i was like whoa this is really cool 
because I didn't know yeah. you before the convention. I saw your name mm-hmm. and things, but I was like, Bubbles? Come on, it's a magic convention. <laughs> yeah. They had a they had a they had a quartet and it one of the one of the people might be on here. Sorry if you're hearing this, but they had these guys that was like a, a I don't know what you call it, a three piece quartet. The guys like the old timey singers going back and forth. Oh uh, yeah. But they would do like a silk vanish. One would vanish it. And let's do it this way. One would vanish it. We all know that's done. And then the other yeah. guy would make it up on the other end. And oh, I was like, funny. okay, that's not really magic. And <laughs> I talked to Eric the Camps about it. He was like, I loved it. I loved it. I just want magic, man. We don't need singing yeah. in a magic. Yeah. We don't need bubbles <laughs> at a magic convention. And then yeah. you got up there and I was like, whoa, no, this is mm-hmm. magical looking. It is really yeah. cool. And when you put a card inside of a balloon and make it levitate, uh-huh. I mean, that's magical. That is yeah. beautiful. I really yeah. liked it. Um, um, thank you. you. I, I used to. I used to be, um, and it's actually part of my show now because um, when I first started, I used to worry about being magic enough uh, because a lot of times when I get hired for these conventions, they, they're they hiring me for the bubble wall. They're hiring me for the bubble stuff, but I'm like, oh, I'm at a magic convention. I have to do magic. Um, <laughs> but um, you know, they'll say to me, no, no, no. We want you to do the bubble wall. We want you to do this. And a good friend of mine, um, told me that, well, no, it gives you a magical feeling. So bubbles fit into the realm of magic. Um, and of course, I use the quote in my show from Tom Nadi that uh, bubbles are no illusion. They are real magic. Um, so yeah, uh, it, it's it's a weird thing. And sometimes I do recognize that I am the juggler at the magic convention <laughs> and I'm okay with that. <laughs> Dude, it was, it was really cool. And what I like this morning, my little girl, we usually film these later on at night. We usually do it like mm-hmm. 8 or 9 p.m. at night. And you wanted to do it earlier in the day. And my little girl, yeah. she's watching my little boys right now. We have identical twin yeah. sons. We have an 11-year-old and she's down there. She's like, what are you doing? Why did you book it so early? Honey, we did it. This guest did. Well, who are you interviewing today, Dad? And I pulled up your TikTok and showed it to her. <laughs> we just bonded over how cool Aww. you did a, a bubble and a bubble and you did a whole bunch of bubbles and a square bubble with smoke on the uh-huh. inside and she was her eyes just got all big she sees magic all the time but seeing mm-hmm. your videos and the card in the in the bubble that levitated mm-hmm. her eyes got all big and it was like she was experiencing magic for the first time in a long time again yeah she told me the other night That's she cool. said um it was very cute yeah. very and my little girls get to be that teenage age so yeah we're butting heads a lot lately she's getting that oh yeah <laughs> And this was like bringing her back in. I was getting my little girl back this morning. And you helped Aww. create that. So God bless Aww. you. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> that warms my heart. Thank you. <laughs> Make sure you follow her. Dad. What is her name? I want to follow her, Dad. Go ahead. Go ahead. I love it. So, I love uh, it. <laughs> let's talk about your TikTok. I mean, you got yeah. millions of downloads. Way to go, yeah. girl. Way to yeah. go. The followers Thank you. as well. Thank you. Yeah. Um, there was a video that I did. Um, I did a virtual show. It was uh, one of the first big virtual shows that I did um, that wasn't my own that I, you know, curated, but that someone hired me for. Um, And it was for um, a compilation of artists from Bindle Stiff Circus. We were doing, um, was it Lincoln Financial? It was some financial firm um, that we were doing a virtual show during the pandemic for. And um, I recorded it locally, of course. And then I later I, I was like, oh, this is actually kind of good. Let me put it on TikTok. And I put it on TikTok and, you know, nothing had taken off at all on TikTok up to this point. Like I was doing it for months and like ready to throw the towel in. And this one video just went viral. Um, I got millions of you. And I think now it's at like 9 million views on this one of me doing the bubble wall. And people were just the comments that they had on there were, um, I've never seen anything like this. Um, is this, um, oh, what is her name? There's a fairy in the Tinkerbell movies that plays with dewdrops. (laughs) And they're like, oh, Silver Mist, that's her name. They're like, Silver Mist, is that you? Like, it was just funny, the connections that people made from this video. Um, and people shared it so much. And that's how it kind of made its rounds is people shared it so often. Um, and then I've had a couple other go viral that have just been silly ones. Um, there's a couple other bubble artists on TikTok. Um, I, I duetted the one girl um, where we are bouncing smoke bubbles and <laughs> that one went viral just because it was cutesy. Um, but yeah, TikTok has been a lot of fun. Um, it did open a few doors for me. I actually got contacted by Biore 
to be a bubble consultant for one of their commercials. Um, they, oh. they literally said that they saw that viral video, my first one. Um, and it was part of their storyboard because they were, they were doing a hemp product and they wanted to honor vape culture. <laughs> so they wanted to combine smoke and bubbles. Um, and they literally were like, we just had your video on our vision board. Um, and we, we were trying so hard to do smoke bubbles and we couldn't figure it out. So, um, they literally called me last minute. It was over Memorial day. I was working a Renaissance fair actually. And I was like, there's no way I can work a Renaissance fair and then fly out Memorial day and like, come do that. There's no way. And they basically were like, uh, uh, how much? <laughs> so I was what? like, oh, it's that kind of thing. They want me really bad. Um, so it was a lot of fun to just be flown out and like, I wasn't in the commercial, but my bubbles were, so that was a lot of fun. <laughs> awesome, so girl. Cool. Do you yeah. have a link to the commercial? They actually, um, I don't think they ever published the commercial. There was, uh, a little blip, a little blurb that I don't even think were my bubbles, but it was from that set, that session. There is a, um, a B reel. Um, I can find the the link for you, but there was a B reel that they posted from this well, video. We have that Facebook group. Anything you yeah. have, like send it to me, and I'll post it. Yeah, uh, I will. <laughs> maybe they're saving it for the Super Bowl. Oh, maybe that would be, cool. <laughs> That'd be funny. Uh, <laughs> yeah, dude, that is so great. That is awesome. Yeah. I had no idea that you got flown out for that. That's yeah, an opportunity. Yeah. So, That's how often cool. are you posting? Are you posting three, four times a week, or is it once or twice uh, a week? It depends on kind of my mood and how busy I am, but um, the uh, advice that I've read is that you should post three to four times a day, which is a lot of content. Um, so I, yeah, I usually only post once a day I try for, but um, I, I take a lot of like um, videos that I've done or things that I've, um, you know, I perform virtual for, and I, I always record it locally and I take little snippets from it and I break it up and I, I put it into, because it's all short form videos. So like six second videos, you know, so it's half of a trick or, you know, so um, it's a lot of content, but you can, you can make it happen with some old footage, you know, um, but TikTok is a whole beast. <laughs> it's crazy. That is so awesome. That is so yeah. awesome. And yeah. uh, so besides Biore, you also have something else mm -hmm. really cool coming up. And that's the Masters of Illusion. Yes, Masters of Illusion is coming up. Uh, it actually airs. The first episode is February 11th uh, for the ninth season. I know that I'm not on the first or second episode, uh, but I won't know until two weeks out what episode I'm on. Um, so we get an email every Sunday night um, saying who's on the episode uh, two weeks out. So I will find out. Um, I'm very excited. Um, I don't know which piece of mine they're airing. Um, I did, I performed four pieces for them. Um, and they, they always tell you, you know, we, we might not use you at all, or we might only use one thing or whatever fits in their, their format. They just, they try to get a lot of footage. Um, so who knows what's going to be on there, but I'm sure it'll probably be bubble wall or my sculptures. Cause that's the, the cool stuff that I do. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited for that. And, um, that actually came about because of a virtual show as well. Um, during the pandemic, um, last year I did an SAM international show gala show for Anthony Darkstone and, uh, Gay Blackstone was there in the audience. And we had like a little talk back afterwards and it was really funny. She was like, wow, I've never heard of Meadow Perry before, but now I have. <laughs> so, uh, you know. Those weird little virtual things that you just do, you never know who's watching. So, it's awesome. That's awesome. So, uh, phone parties became something right before the pandemic. Everybody was doing that. Have you yeah. ever dabbed in that or instead I, of yes. on your, to play with foam filling your stage, something like that? Yes. Um, I have a foam machine that I just got um, at the end of the last summer. Um, and I did one foam party. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> the foam cannons are super duper heavy, at least the version that I got. I think there's a newer version now that is a lighter one, but wow, it's super heavy. So um, I think I have to get an assistant to help me with that. But the foam, once it's set up and running, it's so easy and it's so much fun. Um, 
and it's definitely something that I would love to play around with. Um, I was just talking to my mentor, Jeff McBride, about scaling up my show and doing illusions. And um, I can't, you probably, you might know his name. There, there was an illusionist um, that was producing girls from bubble foam. Like um, it was just a table. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm like, wow, that's really cool. I want to do that. <laughs> Produce my kids from bubble foam. <laughs> Who was it? It'd be I great. I don't rem I I remember seeing it. It's vivid in my I head. I have it. I have it written down. I can't think of his name right now. Topaz. Topaz is his name. Yes. 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 That's his name. <laughs> yeah. Topaz is awesome. And yeah. I, I love everything that dude does. Yeah. 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 Produce your kids from foam. Perfect. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that would be so fun. Um, or a messy, if, but fun. <laughs> but think about it. Now Now upsell that. Take it to a right. corporate. Now you're, now you're producing the CEO in foam. Yeah. I know, right? And it's it's so funny because you look at, um, you know, with a bubble show, that's always the hard part is people going, oh, well, isn't it a big mess? And, you know, I have to, I bring mats and everything um, and scaling up to like a foam, that's a bigger mess. But you see like these bigger production shows where, um, you know, it rains on stage or, uh, you know, Cirque du Soleil has like an Olympic sized pool on the stage. Like, so it can be done. We can do this. <laughs> Do you have, I'm, I'm big into marketing and uh, we talked a little bit about it at the convention. I was like, hey, you ever have any ideas? You ever need anything? Call me. I love just brainstorming with it. Do you yeah. have your own formula that you sell like back of the room after your show? Do you have pet? Um, I do. Yes, I do. Um, I have a powdered uh, that, that I sell um, with instructions on how to mix it for big bubbles. Um, and then I also sell South Beach bubbles because they just come in really convenient packs. I don't have to like, you know, I, I'm like Walter White in my bathroom measuring powders on a little gram scale <laughs> for my recipes. Um, so, uh, yeah, that it's. That's yeah. a TikTok. Dress like Walter I know. White. Yeah. It's <laughs> anyone, anyone who has been around me when I'm like, oh, I have to go make bubbles. They're like, this looks like a drug lab. And I'm like, I know it's bubbles. <laughs> like, it's very precise and scientific. You have to measure things out uh, very specifically on a gram scale. And it's, it's really funny. <laughs> we had a kit somehow, some way, I don't know where I got it, but it had gloves mm -hmm. and you could play with the bubbles. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. We got it at a magic convention. Yeah. But this was 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. not 10 years ago because Lana played with them too, but it was, it was a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. So is that, a, yeah. is that a, bubble or is that a certain glove or um yeah so there's uh the microfiber gloves um it sort of has that like um what's what's the word it's got like elastic in it um and for some reason with certain types of recipes of bubbles the glycerin and the elastic in the gloves it it doesn't pop the bubble okay. um so there's diff there's other fibers that are like that like there's wool um you may have seen um, videos of magicians making bubbles and bouncing them off their jackets because um, a wool jacket will also not pop the bubble. And also steel wool, um, I guess because the fibers are so closely knit, steel wool also does not pop bubbles. So it's really interesting, um, the yeah. different science. Of that. Yeah. Wow. I think yeah. Wool was right? Yeah. 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 We got to get a tennis racket and play with it like that. That'd be fun. Yeah, <laughs> for sure, for sure. Um, but yeah, it's it's really interesting um, the the science behind bubbles and like why things work the way they do with surface tension and um, it, it it it's magic. It really is. <laughs> Dude, that's so awesome. So, what other what other venues would would I know of that you've worked? Mm -hmm. Have you done the castle? Have you done like Chicago Magic um, Lab? I, uh, those are my goals for this year. I did do the castle virtually. Um, <laughs> and I keep, there's multiple people that are like, you were the topic of conversation with the magic castle. So I'm like, oh, okay, well, hopefully they hire me. <laughs> um, and, uh, I'll be performing with Benjamin Barnes, um, in March next month. So, um, that's kind of the set that I'm kind of honing in on my 20 minute set. Um, and we're recording it. Um, but also he's going to happen to be there. So hopefully he'll get to see it live and maybe he'll bring me to Chicago Magic Lounge. 
Um, I've been to the lounge a couple times and I absolutely love it there. Um, and I can definitely see my show on their stage. So 100%. I, I think I've seen like an Instagram picture of you there or going through the washer and dryer. And I thought you'd Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, I was there a couple of times and I just, just as an audience member, it's amazing, let alone performing there. I'm sure it's even better. But um, I, yeah, I've been at a couple local venues like Smoky Mirrors Magic Theater, Elkton Magic, um, Pose Magic. Um, and then, of course, the new Philadelphia show called Above Magic Above Standard, um, which is is not a pitfall against magicians. It's just literally above a place that's called Standard Tap. So it's called Magic Above Standard. Um, but I really love that name. Um, I think that's a cool name. Um, but they're they're kind of expanding to Baltimore. So um, I'll be a part of their Baltimore show as well. It'll be a lot of fun. Cool to have all these neat venues popping up yeah. and a place yeah. you see, like stand up has stand up. Mm -hmm. You can go to any town and perform several shows, yeah. but magic doesn't have that. But it's getting it. It's getting it. Yeah, it, it is getting it. Um, Lindsay Noel and Francis Minotti are producing Magic Above Standard, and I think magic is kind of trending towards the way that uh, comedy is, where um, it's it's in much higher demand um, and not just the big names. It's you know. Um, even the local guys are, are in demand. I think magic is going the same way that there's going to be kind of a renaissance of magic. Let's hope anyway. <laughs> so uh, you hang out with Jeff McBride, you study under him. Mm -hmm. Do you do yes. card manipulation? Do you do anything like that that he's known for? Have you played with any of that? Um, I just started doing one-handed cuts. Um, okay. I, I, um, I learned the Chicago opener. Um, so I'm starting to do some, some card tricks. Um, I can do, you know, a double lift. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm really trying to focus on having a walk around set that has nothing to do with bubbles. Um, right. Just because um, cocktail magic is kind of in demand here on the East Coast. And especially if you're a woman, um, you know, dressed in a sequin gown and, and being all glamorous and you do magic is uh, a big selling point so um i'm working on learning that traditional card magic for that so has jeff taught you about uh pockets inside that sequin gown for walk around you're gonna need some pockets That's, so i'm so happy that i'm friends with Lindsay noel because she is an amazing yeah. costumer and um she's helping me she actually helps me hem my dress but um she's like anywhere you want to put pockets we can put pockets so um she's amazing and um you know, anywhere that I want to have a pocket put in, she, she helps me. She's That's awesome. That's good. Perfect That's good. That You're gonna need yeah. And the cool yeah. thing is, I mean, you know, I think of like Juliana Chen. She just walks out there and she produces 50 decks of cards. Yeah. And it's like, where did yeah. they come from? Those pockets are yes. invisible. So beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> totally. It's so, great. um, I'm all over the place. So you're, you're with Jeff McBride and studying under him. What what does he get you to focus on? What does he get you to work on? In case you don't know Jeff McBride, Jeff mm -hmm. McBride is a, uh, uh, he has the mystery school theater. I mean, he has a mystery school. People from all over the world come to study under him. And um, he does a lot of theory. He does a lot of, a little bit of everything. What has he got you focusing on besides um, the big illusion? I would say he helps me kind of focus on what goals to go for next. Um, and like, I'll tell him kind of, oh, I have this vision of like having this bigger show. Um, and he'll give me, you know, a video of Topaz and look at what Topaz is doing. He's doing a thing with foam. I would have never come across that guy without Jeff McBride pointing me in that direction. Or like he's pointed me to old Fred Capps videos of him with a champagne uh, bottle and he pops it open and bubbles come out. Um, so Jeff McBride has this wealth of knowledge of the magic history um, that's just amazing. And not just a magic. Um, he knows a lot of um, sort of adjacent variety um, performances and, and old like classic Hollywood stuff that I would have never come across. Like um, he turned me on to a Jean-Baptiste um bubble thing from an old like 1930s movie that I, I also would have never come across like um you know so it's it's fun to like get inspirations from this older material that 
um, no one does now, you know, and so I can take it and make it my own and um, take inspirations from that. Um, you know, everything old is new again. So, <laughs> um, but Jeff does also challenge me um, to work on manipulations a lot more. So, um, you know, he's, he's like, you got to do billiard balls, but with bubbles, <laughs> like, um, and he really encourages me to try to strive for doing a competition. Cause that's also kind of the next thing for me. I like, I kind of skipped that step. I went from like, okay, I built this show and then I got thrown into magic convention world, <laughs> um, which yeah, I know I'm kind of the juggler at the magic convention, but um, it kind of goes back to that, like trying to prove that I'm magic enough. So now I'm like, well, I want to do a manipulation and sleight of hand act and I want to, I want to win an award. So Jeff has been helping me and pushing me towards, towards those goals. Dude, I, the, the idea of doing uh, the billiard balls with bubbles. I mean, that's just perfect. It just fits. Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't see it. Do they have yeah. like glass billiard balls? They do. Um, there is, um, there's a it's couple different bad. versions of that. It's been done multiple okay. times, but with um bubbles. Yeah, but I always, um, I always have a hard time because I'm like, oh, these don't look like bubbles. And I finally found a set that is iridescent that looks like bubbles, that doesn't look like you, you know, um, you know, those little um, quarter machines and you get like a little bubble thing with a toy inside. Um, mm -hmm. So many of the magic kits that are the billiard balls that are bubbles look like those little like plastic. And I'm like, they just don't look good. <laughs> so, but like I found, plastic. I yeah, I finally found a set that is iridescent and it looks like bubbles under the the stage light because that's the way that my magic is presented is important to me. So, <laughs> well, and yeah. you can make it. That's another thing. Magicians will buy that trick and they'll blow a bubble and then they'll do it. But yeah. you you have the knowledge to make that bubble actually match the size that it's going to yes. be perfect. So it's going to. Yeah, that's also it. another. Oh my gosh, I'm. So happy you said that. That is another pet peeve of mine. There are so many magicians that do magic tricks and they'll they'll make bubbles and they'll pull a bubble out. And I'm like, that bubble isn't even the same size. That's not believable. <laughs> I see that it. That is every a pet time. peeve of mine. <laughs> I see it every time. Every time. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So we, we met at uh M A E S. That was the first time mm -hmm. we met. And um I videotaped for you and took pictures. And yeah. I do that for everybody. And you actually use some of my footage yeah. in your promo and in your TikToks. I'm so happy yeah. to be a part of that. That's oh my gosh. It was all yes. my uh, <laughs> Thank you for, for taking such good video because um, you had two different angles um, and they were both great quality. So, you know, I've had a lot of times where people are like, oh, I got this footage of you. And I'm like completely washed out. <laughs> like, and you can't hear me. Like you did great on the, the sound and everything. It was fantastic. So. I was happy to be able to put this montage together for my demo reel um, with some different looks from different shows. And, and that one was great because I got to do the two different angles. Um, I had a participant on the stage, Jason, and, um, you know, got to be talking to him and then the camera switches and I'm, you know, the other direction. So that, that was fantastic. <laughs> Dude, it was, it was a fun night. And what's hard there is they use that spotlight and that washes everybody yeah. else. Yeah. So, so luckily, I think they turned it off for your part because of the, the yes. wall that you have behind you. So I was able to get great footage. So yeah, that was just, I got lucky. That is, I, um, I always make them do a light check beforehand. And I often tell them um, for this part of my show, turn the spotlight off um, because otherwise it just, it doesn't make the bubbles show up as well because the bubbles work better with kind of diffused lighting around it and not like a harsh bright light. Whenever you have a harsh bright light, all you see is that round <laughs> focal point of the light. So um, that's that's always important to me. I always do a test beforehand that, you know, I, I do the bubbles to test for if there's wind in the space and then the lighting, which we were really fortunate because in that room at MAES, they had that beautiful like chandelier thing and it reflected light so well because they had it really dim um, and it reflected uh, diffuse lighting on the bubbles really beautifully. So I was excited about that. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. 
That's cool. I had a thought. I just totally lost it. It was M A E S. I don't know. Ask her a question, Natalie. <laughs> um, yeah, um, <laughs> oh my gosh. I have a great story about M A E S. Please, um, please. Lindsay Noel and I crashed two weddings during that convention. <laughs> There we, was a lot going on. There was a lot. There was a was lot going on. So was that the year that uh, Boris was there as well? What's that? Was that the year Boris Wilde was there as well? Yes. Yeah. There was a lot Boris, going on. There, there was a there lot was going on. on. Um. So there was a there was two girls and a guy that kind of crashed our little after party at the the convention in the little suite that we had, and you know the women they stick out like a sore thumb because there's only like five of us. So for these other women to be there, it's like, who is that? Um, so it, they could tell that they weren't with us. And they they actually, the I think there was one guy or two guys, they kicked the guys out, but let the ladies stay. So and that they could them do magic. magic for them. Yeah, to show I, them I magic. There. I was and there. me and Lindsay, me and Lindsay were like, what? what? <laughs> so we were like, hey, you crashed our party. Take us to yours. <laughs> and, she, and they did. So we went to this party and it was hilarious. And Lindsay Noel, she inspires me so much. She knows how to work a room. Um, and she's also like, that's inspired me so much to learn uh, walk around magic and to do the card magic because she just, she worked it so well. Um, and then we were leaving. It's like three in the morning. We're leaving and we're in the elevator. And there was these other women in the elevator. They were like, oh, you look like you're coming from somewhere where you come. And we just started up a conversation and they were with a different wedding. And as soon as we said, we're magicians, they said, oh, you have to come to our suite. So we went to a second wedding party um, and did magic for them. And um, for both parties, Lindsay was like, all right, um, I'm not asking you to pay me, but I need a token from this part. So she got two like wedding party favors from each wedding. And it was so hilarious. That's and it's awesome. Like That's fun. The best memory I have now. <laughs> wow. I know what my question was because you talked about the diffuse light and it totally messed yeah. me up with that, with that beautiful chandelier. Spotlights. Spotlights at mm -hmm. convention are such a pain. We do 400 oh shows here. The only place I ever see a spotlight right here that you can't get out of <laughs> is at a magic convention. Nowhere else have yeah. I ever worked. No spotlights. Yeah. Do you see that it's, as well? I do. Yeah. Um, there's a couple magic um theaters that are the same way where i'm like they're like we have state-of-the-art lighting design and i'm like these lights are way too hot you do not have like you might have state-of-the-art lighting design but you don't know how to use it right. yeah. <laughs> and you know you don't want to come in and be that guy or that girl you don't want to be like you know you need to fix your light so you just kind of roll with it but like um i'm reminded of uh recently i saw a tiktok um of mariah carey for uh, Christmas where she's on stage and there's this really bright spotlight and you see her walk up to the microphone and she looks and she kind of calculates this spotlight is too hot and she takes the microphone and she moves back out of the spotlight. Um, so like that, yeah, being washed out is no good. Like you want to have light on you, but not that much light. <laughs> well, I used to think I was I was wrong. Like I didn't know as much as the convention, the people that put on the convention. Maybe this yeah. is how they put in show business. They always put a big spotlight on you. But yeah. we, we theaters all over, and it's like no one ever does a spotlight on you like that anywhere yeah. we work. Yeah, mm -hmm. so crazy. Yeah, so yeah. Crazy. it annoys me. Yeah. It, it, but, <laughs> and then they try to take pictures and try to take video for my friends. Yeah. Oh, it it's such yeah. Killer. Killer. Yeah. All right. So um, we're, I'm all over the place, and I'm going to continue to do that. I hope you're all right. That's with okay. That. I'm totally okay with that. <laughs> your, your, your boys are both of them uh -huh. in uh, martial arts. They are both in martial arts. Um, they're actually doing their belt testing tonight. So very exciting times. All right. What yeah. color? And what they're, martial arts? They're they're beginners. Um, they're just testing. I think for their strike. Um, okay. They're what they just started like a couple months ago. So they have like where they put like the electrical tape of the, the colors on the belt. So they have their two little yellow spots and they think they're testing to get like the actual belt with the, the yellow stripe on it. So, yeah. So is this karate? Karate, yep, karate. Um, they're really enjoying it. Um, it. The Action Karate, which is a franchise here in Philadelphia, um, 
they 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 love it there um you know and it all the rules apply so if we're traveling um and there's another action karate or um a karate place that's within that association like we'll we'll know how it runs we'll know the rules you know so we can pop in somewhere um which is great so do you do you do karate as well i do i also do just really? started they they were running a special for january that um parents train for free so i was like my kids were like, mom, you have to do karate. And I was like, okay. And I used to do Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Um, so I was like, all right, let's do karate. I'm, we're here, you know, in the evenings anyways, I might as well. Um, so I started doing it and um, they were, they were like, wow, we can tell you have training. And it's, it's funny because the muscle memory from Brazilian jiu-jitsu and then my dance training comes into play so often. <laughs> Uh, or they'll be like, Meadow, you're pointing your toes. <laughs> I'm like, what? oh, sorry. <laughs> Dance training. <laughs> wow. Wow. So uh, are you testing for a belt tonight as well? I'm not. I, since I just started. Um, okay. I, and well, and the boys have been sick. So we've missed a lot of classes. Um, so I'm behind on my uh, class fulfillment uh, for belt testing. But next month, totally. So Natalie became a health coach last year. And she lost oh, seventy. Awesome. Pounds. I lost fifty pounds, wow. and her health her health coach teaches. Uh, oh, takes Taekwondo, Taekwondo with her family yeah. as just a workout, a, a family getting yeah. healthy workout type thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and they love it as a family. So uh, that's that, awesome. that's pretty cool that you guys are all doing karate together. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. It's funny because their dad. I'm not with their dad, but he's also taking karate. So sometimes we're in the same class, and I get I get to punch their dad in the face, which is a lot of fun. <laughs> wow this is taking a turn it's a little bit therapy it's a little bit therapy. yeah it is it's like family therapy <laughs> that was gonna that was gonna be my next question but you, I guess you get along with your ex yeah that, yeah we get along yeah. for the most part yeah um, so does he take care of the boys when you're on the road he does he takes them okay. usually on the weekends um and so usually I will I have a nanny or a babysitter I have a couple girls that usually come to the house um and they'll watch the boys after school or before school if I'm like overnight somewhere. Um, and then he takes them overnight. Um, but, you know, he works like stupid early in the morning. So um, we have to have a nanny come in the morning. But uh, yeah, that's been working out really well. And um, I was really nervous to like leave the boys for extended periods of time. But that's been working out really well. And they're sort of getting to the age now that I think um, kind of like how you guys do. I might be able to take them with me for things. So I may do that this summer um, and just kind of hit the road with them and see how that goes. Well, with ours, it's really funny. Uh, our little girl, we had no idea what we were going to do. So um, yeah. she, we have doves and rabbits in our show and they're in travel containers and they go underneath yeah. my show table. And then mm -hmm. my daughter in her little, it's not a stroller, car seat. the car seat thing. She would go under the table as well with the animals. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the show, we'd pack it everything up. And they're like, you had a baby here? Like, yeah, yeah. But they <laughs> That's <know>. hilarious. <laughs> so um, with the twins, it's totally different. It's double everything. Sure. We have to have a sitter on the road with us, which is her niece that comes along with yeah. us. But I can't wait till we're able to. It sounds bad, but I can't wait to break it where we can just have the boys and us and the yeah. babysitter is great and everything, but man, it's going to be, I don't know. It just, I feel like I'm tethered to the babysitter and I can't wait to break yeah. that tether is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's definitely a thing for me. Um, so like when I, I talk in terms of like potentially being booked for the magic castle, it's like, oh, well, what am I going to do for an entire week? Uh, you know, I'm going all the way to California. Um, you know, what am I going to do with the boys and being away from them? That's really hard. Um, yeah. cause I can't just take them with me to the magic castle. You know, so um, I understand your your pain, but um, I'm also a twin. Twins are awesome. We you have oh, a built-in nice. buddy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, did your twin bite you? Did you bite your twin? We're we're in a biting phase now. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. Gosh, it's, it's yeah. awful. The, yeah, the scene, full on scabs after they yeah play. yeah. Like, oh my goodness! And then they'll hug each other. And they'll yes. talk, playing together, and then all of a sudden, all hell will break loose. And I'm just like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they're, they're I, not two and a half yet, and yeah, they'll bite 
they'll bite and then that one will scream and the other one's like what i don't know what <laughs> and by the time you get up to turn up my desk their living room is here the desk is here mm-hmm. they're right behind me but if, by the time i turn around the other one's just how That's do they play it off room. how do they know they're good yeah. i don't know how to yeah um i when i worked at the daycare um i was in the one-year-old room and we would always have one or two biters and it was always like you had to be on them all the time it was so stressful (laughs) oh oh god yeah yeah any tips to break it um teething rings cold teething rings and um i don't know if you do pacifiers with your kiddos uh pacifiers also it seems to be like a an oral fixation like having something to chew on or bite on um, helps we took the pacifiers. I got rid of the pacifiers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, I feel that. I feel that. Um, so it's usually yeah, easy. It's usually um, that they need some kind of sensation, kind of like a cat, like clawing at a, a post. Um, yeah. Not that kids are cats, but you know what I mean? Um, I get it. Sort of like that. Or also sometimes it's out of frustration because they, they don't, they don't have the words to say something. So like my brother took my toy. Are <laughs> like so, yeah, yeah, so, for sure. Um, all right, so the characters that you do now, we're all over the place. The characters that you do now is just you, 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 you don't do the you never did the mermaid, the mermaid never happened. No, mermaid never happened. Um, I try to keep it so I've, I've been trying to have this more sophisticated, sort of adult cabaret style show. Um, but then I do have kind of my spunkier, more family-friendly version of myself, I guess, persona um, that I do for like summer camp um, where I still wear sequins and stuff, but I usually wear like a, a fluffy, not a tutu, but like a tulle skirt um, and sneakers. And, but I still wear like a glamorous necklace and I'm still kind of like a glam princess, but a little more punky. <laughs> Have you yeah. ever done a magic only show? Uh, yeah, actually, that's really why I started diving more into magic, because um, sometimes a lot of times I get booked for outdoor shows because people think bubbles are messy. It needs to be outside. But if there's more than 11 miles per hour wind, I can't do bubbles. So I do more magic. Um, so, yeah, 100 <laughs> percent. Wow. I wouldn't. Yeah. I mean. I yeah, get, like I do, head. I do the um, load of ace, I do coloring book, I do mouth coils, I do solid bubble, I do prediction. I, I have this thing, uh, this uh, piece, I, I think I did it at Maze. Um, it's called No Place Like Foam, and I, I do a prediction piece on, um, I'm building something out of foam. So it's like bubble adjacent, <laughs> is what I call it. I do um, remember it. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. So I do magic effects, but I somehow always relate it to bubbles. So it's still bubble magic. That's my, that's so, my trick. <laughs> imagine somebody finding you on TikTok and hiring you for their wedding and it's an outdoor wedding and you can't do mm-hmm. any bubbles. That's all they, they wanted the, 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 the queen of TikTok and bubbles. Yeah. And you can't do bubbles. We got to have well, a bubble for you to perform it. Yeah. Like t- yeah. I'm pretty straightforward with my clients. I tell them, you know, um, the weather is variable and it may be more of a magic show than a bubble show, um, okay. but it'll still be bubble themed. Um, so I, I let them know about that. And I always tell them, if you have an indoor space, you should have it indoors because one, we don't have to worry about rain dates or anything like that. Um, two, oh, we don't have to worry about my bubbles blowing away. I always tell them uh, when my show is outdoors, it can blow literally <laughs> like my show blows away. Um, and number three, if it's like stupid hot out or stupid cold out, the audience isn't going to enjoy it because they're going to be too busy worried about how they're feeling and their comfort rather than enjoying the show. So having it indoors is way better on all accounts. And then also um, I charge extra if it's outdoors because they're taking the risk, not me. So I always tell them it's better if you do it inside. So um yeah. <laughs> at county fairs, it could be 103 degrees outside. Yeah. People, yeah. People just don't want to clap. No. That, that takes yeah. energy. They, oh, don't, no. they, they don't want to move because that's going to make them sweat more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like, oh, that makes you look bad. <laughs> and then as a performer, like your makeup is melting off, your hair is frizzing out. There's so much to worry about. 
I worry about my hair and makeup so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So Instagram, Meadow Perry. Uh, uh -huh. We got uh, meadowperry.com. Uh, TikTok, yeah. Meadow Perry. It's pretty easy, straightforward. Uh, yeah. TikTok is actually Meadow Perry official because there are other Meadow Perrys out there, apparently. Uh, oh, what? Actually, that's a funny story. During the pandemic, I met one. Um, there's oh. She's probably 13 now. She was 11. She's 13 now. Um, there's a Meadow Perry in Western Pennsylvania um, who Googled herself during the pandemic and found me. And she reached out and she said, hey, I'm 11 and you're amazing. I Googled myself and we have the same name. So I invited her to my virtual show. And now her and her whole family are big fans. <laughs> that is oh, awesome. Sweet. That is yeah. cool. Yeah. cool. Um, you got to teach her some bubble tricks. That I know, way, right? <laughs> that way you can franchise. It's I'm true. Sending Meadow Perry to your show. Yeah, right? no. yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So, what do, what do you have planned for the future besides hopefully work in the castle? What do, what are your Oh what are your yeah, habits? um, big plans for this year. Um, 2023, I want to work the castle. I want to work Chicago Magic Lounge. Um, a few other theaters that I want to get into. Um. I also have a plan, uh, which I'm getting my passport now. It hasn't manifested yet, but I want to perform overseas somewhere. Um, so that's a goal. Um, and also, uh, Lindsay Noel and I are launching a franchise called Bubbleverse. Um, so there's been such a demand for bubble shows um, that I just, I, I turned down so many clients. Um, and I literally tell people, because um, I teach bubble magic as well on bubble you uh with carissa Hendricks, and okay. I, I tell people I, there's there's so much work for bubbles um people are hungry for bubble artistry and it's such an easy sell like um who doesn't love bubbles right so um i wanted to bring on more people into my team um so that if i get booked for something bigger or if i'm booked for multiple things in one day i can source it out and subcontract it to somebody else, um, which was the idea was kind of born out of um, last year um, in March and in May, I had to have two back-to-back -back surgeries and they, it was um, March was expected, um, but they found something unexpected during that surgery. So I had to go back in May to have another surgery and that was unexpected. And I had a lot of bookings. Um, so I had to like scramble and try to find people that could do bubble things um, and fill that in. And so um, the stress of that kind of pushed me to make this franchise. So, yeah. Well, good luck. Send me all the yeah. links to all that. I'll put it on the Facebook. I will. Vote the heck out of it. And totally. Bubble, uh, you guys are still doing Bubble U. I've heard about it, yeah. but I didn't follow up on it. I didn't do any research yeah. on Bubble But um, I think uh, maybe uh, we have a mutual friend that's involved in that as well. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, send me all the links and I'll, I'll get sure. it out there. If somebody sure. wants to get into doing bubbles, they're not a magician listening to this. Mm -hmm. What would they, what would they do? They contact you or look up bubble. Um, they can reach out to me. Um, bubble U is on nonsensekids.com. Um, that's where they can find it. Um, but contact me first because I can probably save you some money on a membership. <laughs> oh, nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Meadow, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for your time today. I totally so awesome thank you so much um, this is amazing <laughs> i wanted her to meet you i i i need to show her my little girl watching your videos now because we only saw like five of them but <laughs> to see my little girl light up watching your videos if you want to see these videos follow her on tiktok it's meadow perry official and uh -huh. um i'll put all the links on all the facebook groups sure. we're awesome thank you so much and thank for you Natalie, I, if you uh want to check out our upcoming public show dates. We have three illusion shows coming up in like the next three weeks. Uh, just go to westisley.com and get our schedule there. Mm -hmm. And the only other thing we have left to say is uh, see, see you, you next week. week. Awesome. Wes, Natalie, thank you so much. Check us out online at westisley.com and patreon.com forward slash Wes underscore Isley for behind the scene videos, blooper videos, never before seen footage, discounts on merchandise, magic trick tutorials, and more. That's Wes Isley spelled W-E-S-I-S-E-L-I. -S -E